Okay, so I've started the recording and I'll turn it over to the judges. All right, good morning, hello. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves, have you introduce yourselves, tell us where you're from, introduce your teacher and then we'll get started. So I am Kurt Mavis, I'm a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Air Force, currently stationed in Colorado Springs where I teach law at the Air Force Academy and I'm a proud alum of the program as well. So, Canada? Hi, my name is Canada Steele and um, I'm until this weekend, I'm from Maryland. I sold my house this weekend in Maryland um, and I'm moving to Maine, but uh, have spent 20 years with this program and um, love all of you in Maryland. And I'm going to be homesick for quite a long time. So welcome. I was a judge on the U.S. Civilian Board of Contract Appeals, handled government contract disputes around the country and have been with this program for 20 years. Richard, you're muted. I'm filling the space for you. <laughs> you're muted. All right. Well, that's Richard okay. Leiter. There there, you are. <laughs> Richard Leiter. Um, I'm a professor and uh, director of the law library at the University of Nebraska College of Law, uh, coming to you from Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, I um, have been here for about 20 years and been uh, judging state competitions for about 15. This is my first time at the big top. So uh, go easy on me. All right, over to y'all. Hi, my name is Kirsten Cullen. I'm a junior at Boonesboro High School in Boonesboro, Maryland, and I plan on attending a four year school to study nursing. Good morning. My name is Annika Pada. I'm a senior at Boonesboro High School this year. And in the fall, I'm going to be attending University of Maryland at College Park, majoring in philosophy, politics, and economics. Wow. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maddie Taylor. I'm a junior at Boonesboro High School. My plan is to attend Salisbury University for softball, majoring in business. For softball? Yeah. Great. We also have our teacher, Mrs. Vasek. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning and welcome all. So no surprise, we'll, we'll get started with question number two. I'll read question two, then turn it over to you. A Bill of Rights is what the people are entitled to against every government on earth, general or particular, and what no just government should refuse or rest on inference. Do you agree or disagree with this quote from Thomas Jefferson? What are the advantages and disadvantages of, of a national bill of rights as compared to state bills of rights? And what are the differences between positive and negative rights and which are more important to the preservation of liberty? Over to you. We agree with Thomas Jefferson. The fundamental responsibility of any government is to protect and ensure that the rights of its constituents are protected in every and any instance. A Bill of Rights secures the idea of the balance of power amongst the branches of government and the citizens versus the governing body itself. The Bill of Rights is essential to our prized democracy today because of the way it functions. It grants a strong central government while inhibiting the opportunity for it to become an authoritarian government or taking away from citizens' rights. During revolutionary times, anti-federalists urged the federalists to understand the significance of a Bill of Rights. As stated by anti-federalists, a Bill of Rights serves to secure the minority against the assertion and tyranny of the majority, raising the issue of what our society would be like today if it were not for the Bill of Rights, which protects all. The Tenth Amendment of the Bill of Rights confirms that the federal government only has its powers delegated in the Constitution. If it isn't listed, it belongs to the state or to the people reinforcing the idea that the federal government is not entitled to unlimited power. According to Barron v. Baltimore, the court had decided that the Constitution's Bill of Rights was only applicable on a federal level, omitting state and local governments to respect the intent of the incorporation of the Bill of Rights in the first place. To combat this, in Gitlow v. New York, the court ruled that dismissing incorporation of basic fundamental rights such as the freedom of speech could be interpreted and ruled as criminal anarchy law because the state was trying to overpower the national government in this case. Due to this case, the importance of the state respecting and following the Bill of Rights was emphasized on a national level, so that the states must respect the rights of the citizen in the same way the federal level is responsible for. On more of a modern level, Jefferson's ideas and opinions of the significance of a Bill of Rights has been adopted on an international level with the International Bill of Human Rights. This document sets forth fundamental human rights that countries must follow as per United Nations. 
The advantages for a national bill of rights as compared to a state bill of rights is that it sets a precedent for the entire country, which can help regulate the government, citizens, and states. By having a national bill of rights, citizens have the power to control what is instituted and what is not. For example, anti-federalists believe that a bill of rights was imperative because it would put in view the particular principles on which our freedom must always depend, according to Federal Farmer and Farmer 16. The Maryland Declaration of Rights Article 2 states that the U.S. Constitution or any laws and treaties put in place by the national government shall be the supreme law of the state, which goes above the state's own rights, laws, and treaties. The disadvantages to having a national bill of rights rather than leaving states to have their own bill of rights is that it is less representative of the states as individuals. There are arguments that the national government does not have the ability to adequately protect the rights of the people because the politicians in the national government are no longer seen as normal people, so they are too pulled away from society. Positive rights are different from negative rights because positive rights are when the government has to act in a specific way by instituting things for its citizens like public education and protection from criminal acts. However, negative rights are when the government is restricted from taking action. Negative rights are more important to the protection of liberty. Some instances where negative rights have come into play are in cases like Tinker v. Des Moines and Cohen v. California. Both cases involved issues with freedom of speech and both cases decided that the people involved in these cases had the right because they were not harming themselves, others, or inciting violence, thus restricting the government from limiting their rights even if the protesters' messages don't go in the government's favor. By restricting the government and holding them accountable for what they can and cannot do, liberty is protected. These rights are the backbone of our country and have given protection to the citizens of this country. Thank you for listening to our testimony. We are now ready for your questions. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to pick up where you left off and you talk about um, the negative and positive rights. Why does it matter? Why do we care if one's negative, positive? Does it help with my analysis? Does it help with the Supreme Court's analysis? Negative and positive rights are really important, especially today, if we analyze like current events that are happening, especially if we look at things like pandemic, for example, and what's been happening with that, a lot of controversy that's been occurring is because people feel that some of their negative rights are being stepped upon, or sometimes we're not having you know, full access to our positive rights. So if we think, look at things like mask mandates and things, some people are arguing that their negative rights are being stepped upon because they're forced to be doing something when they're supposed to have the ability to freely act. So a lot of things I think it's so important is because that's why people disagree today. And this can be taken into many situations, especially in our current society, because so many people are on different sides of the wall and there's not really a common agreement that's occurring. If, if I can follow up real quickly, and I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but you mentioned the mask mandate affecting somebody's negative rights. Can you explain that a little bit? So it can be positive and negative because positive rights is like, you know, free access or like access to health care and things like that. And if you're looking at something like mask mandates, it might not affect your specific right to healthcare, but in terms of like keeping everybody safe, it could affect someone else's. But in terms of specifically ensuring that people are having masks outside of their house or in public places, you're mandating that they continue to wear masks, keep social distance. So in that sense, you're kind of prohibiting what they can and cannot do, which is in a sense, stepping on their liberty. Okay, and their liberty would be being able to go out and not wear a mask at all. Yes. Um, can I follow up again, Candida? Do you have, yeah, okay. Um, I'd like to, to change uh, tracks just a little bit. Um, under what circumstances can citizens lose rights under the, that are guaranteed to them under the um, constitution? And then sort of as a corollary to that, how can they earn them back? So I know there was a case called Alone v. the State of Shabazz, where two inmates wanted to be able to practice their religion, which they have under the First Amendment right. But because they're inmates, and I think it was an issue with security, their rights, even they are protected, they kind of had to, the courts decided that their safety and safety of others was a little more important. So even though inmates are, their rights aren't necessarily taken away, they are um, a little bit restricted because of the situation they are in. 
so their right to practice their religion. Yes. Okay. Along the lines of that. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, would be Reynolds v. U.S., where um, it kind of explained that human sacrifice is not allowed, even though it goes with your religion. They, um, you're protected to follow your religion, believe in it, but once it goes to a certain point where there's human sacrifice, it's not protected at all. And then in a more general sense, typically we see that when America is in a time of war, such liberty and rights are kind of more restricted. There are multiple court cases that kind of see that. And of course, we would be able to get them back when we're more in a peaceful state. Huh. Thank you. Canada, you're muted. Okay. We're both having a problem. Okay. What do you think was left out of the Bill of Rights? Some could argue uh, technology just because they weren't, technology wasn't a thing back then. And now, especially with the First Amendment right to freedom of speech, it's been a bigger issue currently. So they couldn't have necessarily known that then, but because the Bill of Rights kind of is vague a little bit, there's a lot of issues that we see occurring today where things aren't necessarily explained because it's vague. And so we're seeing issues where we kind of maybe need to um, amend the constitution for more specific things because we're not really sure where the government lies on it or how our rights to certain things are protected by it. Do you think maybe that could just be congressional legislation should take care of that? Does it have to be an amendment? It depends on the severity of it. Specifically with technology, it could be legislation just because it's kind of not a big issue for the country. I mean, yes, there are issues arising with it, but if there is an issue where it's sort of more severe, I would say it necessarily could be amendment, yes. I personally would think two things. One, that like women weren't really included in the constitution as a whole, but especially in the Bill of Rights, I think it's essential that they should have been included because we still face a lot of gender bias and things like that. And with the whole ERA, Equal Rights Amendment, you know, that just was passed by Virginia, which was the 31st state. So I think that it's taken so much time just because we weren't included. And if we were included, especially in the Bill of Rights or the Constitution itself, it would have made it easier. But I would also argue that in a sense, the Second Amendment in the Bill of Rights has been very controversial, and especially with the mass shootings that have occurred, especially, you know, if we look at things like Atlanta, sometimes we can even point to, you know, hate crimes against a specific group of people or race or ethnicity. So I think that in that sense, the Second Amendment maybe should have been a little more explicit on what a well-regulated militia was, because right now, you know, some people take it institutionally as a militia is truly the army that fights. But some people believe that citizens are the militia, which is what's causing a lot of problems. So I think that should have been something that was more explicit on what it meant. Great. Um, going off of what my colleague Annika said about the Second Amendment, there has been a lot of issues. Um, the shootings have gone up 58% from 2018 to 2020. And ever since COVID has happened, 60% of firearm sales have gone up also. So we were talking a little bit about amendments then. Is there any difference between the rights that you find in the Bill of Rights and amendments and those rights added by amendment? Do you think there are any differences or should there be? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Sure, we have- Go ahead. Yeah, sure. We have the Bill of Rights and we, and we have those rights that were established and then we have some amendments to the federal constitution. Any distinction between those rights that we added later? Are they more important, less important and why? I think they're especially important for minority groups in the United States because the Bill of Rights, although, you know, the first 10 amendments, they kind of included general rights for everybody. It was more specifically to white males at that time. Whereas the amendments that have been passed following the Bill of Rights, 
more like, you know, uh, allowing women to vote, allowing African-American men to vote. You know, if we even look at like prohibition, there've been things that have been specific to that time of society. So I think that there is a distinction between them because the Bill of Rights has kind of been sustained throughout time, whereas the amendments have changed. I would say they're more important just because we see it with the Equal um, Rights Amendment with how like every, um, no matter your sex, like you're still given the same opportunities and still having the same rights. And we see it where we still even have issues today where there's a certain, I think, I think there's a amount of cent, sense um, that you make less in an hour a woman would over a guy. And I don't know the exact amount, but I know that it is a little bit less. All right, thank you very much. So, thank you. all right, wonderful job, thank you. Yeah, excellent. All right, we ran out of time. We had a couple more questions and I'm sure you had a couple more answers, but Richard, over to you. Um, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. You uh, clearly have a good handle on um, positive and negative rights. Um, I enjoyed your presentation, your um, description of the importance of these things in the Bill of Rights. I'm really impressed with the level of knowledge and the level of uh, understanding and your comfort level in uh, explaining these things and answering the questions. Uh, these were not easy questions. Um, and a lot of times um, these are questions that don't have answers. So um, being able to talk about them um, with intelligence um, is really important, um, demonstrates the level of knowledge that you have. Um, you should all be very proud of yourselves. Thank you. Okay, um, that was a really lovely job. Makes me proud to be from Maryland, even if it <laughs> ended on Friday. Um, really great job. I, I appreciated your discussion of uh, of masks and, and the technology was interesting. Um, your discussion of women was very good. And, and the second- hey, Real quick, there you go. Thank you, Maddie, perfect. Very good. Um, I just really appreciated your presentation. You did a really nice job of, of uh, discussing the balance of power and balance between the three of you. I, I hope you've had a good time doing this. I know you've got an absolutely wonderful teacher and she must have made it fun to do all of this, but um, nursing, you may not spend a lot of time dealing with this, but you're gonna be wonderful citizens, all three of you. And with your interest in political science, um, this should take you far. I, I, it makes me proud to be part of this program, to think of all of you being educated citizens, not just for yourselves, but for your colleagues and your friends and reading the paper and going out and voting every chance you'll get, you know you're gonna do that. And um, I'm, I'm just very happy for you all that you've managed to do this, but I'm also happy for me, because it means when I'm sitting in my rocking chair in my nursing home, I'll be able to know that, that you all have, have the country in good control. So. Thank you, that was a really lovely presentation and makes me glad to be from Maryland. Take care. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll jump on, on Richard's point because I think he hit the nail on the head. One thing I talked to my cadets about, and these are folks who wanna fly the fighter jets, they wanna be astronauts, they wanna go to the moon. And I tell them this isn't rocket science what we're doing. It's actually harder than rocket science because rocket yeah. science actually has an answer. <laughs> uh, you, you have to do some math, but if you miss the moon, you miss the moon, that's, that's a right or wrong answer. We don't have right or wrong answers here. And so it actually makes this a lot more challenging. Uh, so I really appreciate the discussion. Um, th there are no right answers. It's just something that we're gonna have to continue to work through as we try and make ourselves and our country just a little bit better every day. So thank you for your commitment to that. Really enjoyed this conversation. Congratulations. And one more time, well done. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you.